Welcome back. Getting around on two wheels. In much of the world, biking is the main mode of transportation. Take China, for example, or Denmark, where it's not unusual to see more bicycles than cars on the roads. That's not the case in the U.S. Not yet, but with gasoline prices burning up our billfolds, more of us are turning to bikes for our commutes. And as Energy Now's Josh Zepps tells us in this Energy Next, some folks are also putting a charge into their old Schwinn's. In the roughly 150 years since the bicycle was invented, it's become the most popular method of transportation in the entire world. There are more than twice as many bikes as there are cars, around a billion. But in the grand pioneering tradition of American innovation, some folks are working to ensure that the story of the bike is just beginning. It's personal transportation, it's very cheap, it's very energy efficient. Ed Benjamin is one of the world's top years. experts on the thriving business of electric bicycles and the founder and head of the industry body, the Light Electric Vehicle Association. I speak Chinese now. I spent a major portion of my life in China. The Chinese people have been, been the world's single largest market for buying normal bicycles. Today, one out of every two bikes they buy is electric. And it ain't just China. It's estimated there are about 120 million e-bikes on the road today worldwide. No matter what happens, we do our steady like 20% uh, uh, increase in sales. Bert Sebula and his dog, Mr. Bailey, run one of New York's busiest electric bicycle stores, Nice Wheels. His e-bikes sell from about $1,000 to 4500 Save money, leave your car at home, you stay healthy. Mm. Right. It just makes sense. I think that's the future for a lot of people. Stop. Let me buckle you in. People, for example, like Greg and Jeannie Christ in Washington, D.C. They're so happy whizzing their tots around on their e-bikes that Greg even sold his car. The batteries on their bikes get about 15 miles per charge. We used to bike to work, and I got a couple calls when Jeannie was stranded at the bottom of the hill. It, it's true. <laughs> and I just started thinking, what would be the best way to have her commute with the child and, and, have, and erase the hills? More people using e-bikes because Washington has a lot of hills, and there are a lot of people like us who live four miles away from work. It's not that far, um, but it's far enough to be sort of a pain if you're biking up and down hills. When Americans start saying, cost me 80 bucks, 100 bucks, 120 bucks to fill a tank in my car, what are my alternatives? One of the alternatives is going to be the normal bicycle. One of the alternatives is going to be an electric bicycle. One of the alternatives is going to be your local bus system. Another alternative is going to be a metro that your city hasn't built yet, but you're starting to think it's a pretty good idea. Nobody is saying electric bicycles will replace cars. But you might think about the e-bike boom this way. First, humans invented the wheel and domesticated the horse, which gave us the horse-drawn carriage. Then came the steamboat and the locomotive, then the streetcar and the bicycle, and finally the personal automobile. But what's the next step? It's probably not flying cars and jetpacks. This idea that the best way to get around is to sit in your car and uh, enjoy your air conditioning, listen to your radio, uh, and when you're in a traffic jam, uh, watch a video on your, on your iPhone and maybe apply your makeup. That's a paradigm that it works in some places. There's an awful lot of places it doesn't work. It's not going to be the ordinary human solution for transportation. So here's what you need to know about the electric bike. There are basically two kinds. The first? They're called pedal activated or pedal assist bikes. Right, yeah. The bike will not run without you pedaling it. Yeah. It will just give you some help so you don't kill yourself going up the hill. If you do kill yourself, it's because a New York City taxi cab has sideswiped you. So this will basically magnify the amount of energy that you're putting into the bike fourfold. This is four times stronger than you are. Right. So 250 watts doesn't sound you like much. You haven't seen my but... thighs. <laughs> <laughs> the second type of e-bike is more like a conventional motorbike. This is the Hummer of electric bikes. <laughs> Even has that color, <laughs> that, that yellow. Yep. Uh, this yep. thing, you don't have to pedal it all, you accelerate, it goes. It's almost twice the weight of a pedal mm. uh, pedelec bike, but it's it's a lot of fun. Are the speeds it's comparable? Just, uh, by law, they're not allowed to go faster than 20 miles an hour. So 20? Most, yeah. 20 is cool. I can run 20. Yeah, right. Show me. <laughs> Late last fall, Greg invited me along for a ride. It's got some real juice. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. You can, but you can imagine what it'd be like uh, hauling those kids. Oh, yeah. That trailer weighs about 100 pounds. Yeah. And unlike a motorbike, when you're done zooming around, no need to buy gas. It's very lightweight, um, very low maintenance. It's just plug and play. So after her ride, she can just come and there's a little charger. Plug it in. And the charger, charger light starts to charge up. Mm -hmm. How long does it take? 
It takes about uh, four hours, maybe. Okay. Um, but usually we just leave it plugged in overnight, mm -hmm. and next morning she's ready to ride. I mean, how much gas? How much? How much power does it take? Does it, is it noticeable on your electricity bill that you, oh, no. you use e-bikes? No, it's inconsequential, mm -hmm. really. Now, no story about e-bikes would be complete without a visit to one man, the octogenarian grandfather of the e-bike himself, Frank Jameson. Given the weather in New York and DC at the time, I was pleased to learn I'd be meeting Frank in Naples, Florida. All right. Is it inappropriate to show up to the grandfather of the electric bicycle driving a V6? Frank used to work for General Motors, and when it comes to e-bikes, he and friend Ed Benjamin literally wrote the book. Electric Bikes Worldwide Report is the industry bible. And he was the man who revealed something kind of depressing. All electric bikes are made in China. There are very, Every single one? Very few, very few made in this country. Okay. Nearly 29 million e-bikes were sold worldwide in 2010. Americans bought about 80,000. Europeans snapped up about a million. The Chinese rode away with 27 million. You said that you felt like the world might be on the brink of a transportation revolution. Is that hyperbole? No, it's not on the brink. We're building, worldwide, we're building metros at a fantastic pace. The human race is changing the way it moves, uh, rapidly, effectively, and America is a little bit slow off the mark. What we've got works okay for us at this time. It's becoming unaffordable. We're gonna change. All right, Mr. Bailey, let's burn some rubber. In New York City, Josh Sepps, Energy Now. Electric bike expert Ed Benjamin says he expects half of all bicycles on the road will be e-bikes by 2025. Walmart and Best Buy sell the bikes for about $500 a piece. And Benjamin says that may be the cheapest they'll get because the materials used to make e-bikes are in high demand. And here's something different. Maybe one way to bring the cost down is growing new bikes right out of the ground. The Ajiro Bamboo Concept Bike is the brainchild of a design student in Australia. The bamboo actually grows on a special frame in the shape of a bike, saving on raw materials like steel or aluminum, and saving energy, too. 